All right, I'm here with a Bellator heavyweight tournament participant, Mark Holada. Uh, you know, first off, Mark, uh, how you doing and how's your training going? It's going great, man. I appreciate you having me. Uh, just uh, been at it for about almost 10 weeks now, so it's uh, luckily been injury-free, and uh, it's going strong every day, uh, progressing. So, I mean, I feel pretty ready. I don't think I can get any more ready for this tournament than any other fight I've had. Right now, um, you know, you've had two fights in Bellator. Uh, I was wondering, you know, being on, you know, in such a major promotion, you know, the first time, did you feel any nerves at all? I know you got a quick knockout, so it probably didn't look like it. But you know, how do you feel like you're adapting to the bigger stage now? Uh, yeah, somewhat, you know. And uh, <laughs> I tell everybody, uh, from like after my first, you know, couple fights in my career, I mean, the nerves for me just kind of went away. You know, I mean, I always stuck to that, uh, train hard and make the fight easy. So uh, that's what I've always done, and every time, you know, I keep in the back of my head that my opponent's not training near as hard as me, so that kind of calms the nerves when you get out there in the, the big spotlight, you know, I mean, you know the fans are there, but to me, I'd, I'd rather just block them out and just pay attention to what I need to be doing. Right, and for those who aren't as familiar with you, or they probably know your Bellator career, but let's go back before that, you know, uh, it's the same standard question you probably hear a million times, but uh, what got you into mixed martial arts in the first place? Oh, man, uh, just doing one of those type of things that it was just blowing up here in the city and uh, some guys at the gym where I worked at that had a, they had like a, a team they would go compete in jiu-jitsu tournaments and grappling tournaments and uh, they say, yeah, we have guys that fight and it was just blowing up here in Oklahoma City and uh, I was like, well, I'll just give it a shot because, I mean, I was getting kind of burned out on football anyway and once I was done playing, and, uh, I just uh, went ahead and gave it a shot and, you know, after that you get that itch, man, and, you know, uh, you just can't get it out of out of your head, you know. <laughs> so I just uh, kept kept going. I, I saw myself being successful in it. So I guess just uh, never being able to lose that a uh, that a competitor's edge. Right now, you know your knockout record certainly speaks for itself. But I, I know from first-hand sources that you hit pretty darn hard. Is that something that uh, you think came pretty naturally once you started the striking aspect, or you know did you have to refine some things in your technique before you uh, figured out how hard you could punch? Uh, man, uh, honestly, uh, I always went to, uh, uh, before I started, I was doing, like, a little bit of powerlifting and strongman competitions, and I always knew I was strong, but I, I could brawl, I guess, you know, but you can't, but once you get the technique down and have somebody that knows what they're doing, you know, like, they took the time with me to show me how to throw a pro proper punch, you know, it takes 10 times less energy to knock somebody out than as it would be to brawl, and I kind of found that out. <laughs> Right. No. So, uh, for me, it's just like, yeah, I mean, I never thought that I could, but uh, so I just, you know, I really focused on what I needed to be doing. Right. Now, I know you started off, I think one of the first gyms you trained at was the Academy of Martial Arts in Oklahoma City. Now, I believe you're at a OKC uh, American Top Team affiliate. Is that right? Yes. I'm, uh, I do uh, my jiu-jitsu and, you know, MMA up there, as well as uh, I do my boxing and judo down there at USC Stars and more. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, those are, to me, the two elite programs here in the city, other than, you know, the Lobatos and the World Champions, you know, but uh, all my growing partners and stuff are at American Top Team, and, uh, you know, it's, it's a great deal, and uh, they take care of me, and, you know, I learn a lot. It's a, more of a one-on-one -on -one aspect, opposed to doing things right instead of doing them wrong. Right. Now, going back to earlier on in your career, uh, you know, you got off to a pretty good start. Then I know you had a couple of losses in a row. It was a while ago, but uh, one of the guys you went up against was uh, Daryl Schoonover, who people probably know from the Ultimate Fighter show. Uh, you know, lately he's admittedly looked not as good as he used to. I know early on he was a real serious heavy hitter, a tough guy. But, uh, you know, uh, since then you haven't lost. And I was wondering, was there something in that fight that you kind of took from it and really have improved? Was that like a turning point, or do you think it was just a matter of getting some experience? Uh, not only experience, you know, I mean, he was a tough guy, a uh, very professional guy. I mean, he was cool and all, but uh, to me, it wasn't just, uh, I guess I let the fans kind of down, you know, and it, it takes a toll on you. I mean, compared to even my friends and everybody, you know, like, everybody just kind of fell off, you know. I mean, you get that taste of losing in your mouth, and uh, I came to find out, you know, that it, it's really easy to get satisfied winning, but that taste of losing sticks with you ten times longer than three wins or however many wins you ever have. I mean, I don't know if that makes sense, but uh, to me it's a lot easier to, for I found people to get used to winning, but uh, I know how it feels to lose, and uh, I know that uh, I, it, if I ever lose, it's going to be knowing I gave them all, and uh, it just 
small type of deal. But yeah, it, it, it motivated me to be in practice more, uh, more dedication. Uh, it's not just going to practice. You know, you got to eat right and take care of yourself, get the proper amount of sleep. I mean, yeah, I mean, you really got to dedicate yourself to the sport if this is what you want to do. Mm-hmm. So, uh, like I said, you had two uh, pretty quick knockout wins in uh, Bellator, and uh, also in between there, you beat UFC veteran Carmelo Marrero. So, uh, you know, for your last few fights, uh, you know, you've got a really good stretch going. You've beaten some tough guys. Uh, are you at all surprised at how well things are going right now, or do you kind of feel like this is all the, you know, training and preparation and hard work is just finally paying off for you? I think the preparation and hard work is really paying off. I, I mean, everybody always told me, you know, you, you're going to train hard and the career and everything else and the wins will all take care of itself. And uh, maybe that's what it's done, you know. I mean, I don't even think about going back and looking at my record and, you know, being 12-2 and two or 11-2 and two or but whatever it is, you know. I just know that I take a one fight at a time and I'm going to train hard, like, you know, as if opposed to something happened and I can never do it again. So, I mean, I, I'm going to train every day like it's my last, I guess you could say. Uh, mm-hmm. So, I mean, I just let everything else fall into play for itself. Right, and I know a lot of fighters approach it that way because they know it's a tough sport and you can never take anything for granted. But, you know, you're, now that you're in the Bellator tournament, uh, you know, it's a it's a great spot to be in for a young guy like yourself, I'm sure, and, you know, a great opportunity. But, you know, some guys I've talked to said that, you know, once you get used to that tournament aspect and how close some of the fights are together and that sort of thing, you sometimes have to make some adjust, adjustments as far as how hard you train and when you learn to peak and all that kind of stuff. Are, are you worried about having to make any changes to your training regimen to kind of uh, accommodate the whole tournament setup they have? Uh, yeah, in a way, but uh, a majority of these guys, I think there's me and, of course, Cole Conrad, and I think maybe one other guy in this whole tournament that even wrestles. Everybody else is strikers, you know, so, uh, I mean, I don't have to worry about anybody's jiu-jitsu game or nobody's a black belt in this tournament that I know of, uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I've been focusing a lot on my hands because <laughs> I like to consider myself a pretty good-sized guy, but I walk around at 260, you know, these guys are cutting from 290, 300, uh, I mean, so, uh, my goal in this tournament is to push the pace on them, take them out of their comfort zone from, you know, being relaxed. Right. Because if they're not making these big, huge cuts like this, that's, they're not going to understand how uh, how much energy it's going to take out of them. How, right. how well the, the toll is going to play on their strength. And that's a nice segue mentioning, you know, big, huge guys who might, you know, they're tough, but they might not be great for long, uh, long tournaments and uh, really long fights going the distance. I mean, Ron Sparks, uh, I'm sure you know he's a tough dude and probably hits hard as hell, but, you know, he's, he's definitely a really big guy. Um, you know, I'm sure, you know, it could be an interesting brawl between you two. Um, you know, what do you think of him as far as his style and also how you manage on dealing with his, just his overall physical size? Oh, man, Ron, uh, he was up in New York with me, you know, and uh, we got along great, you know, I never thought I'd be fighting the guy, you know, he's a small fat country boy, too, and, uh, I mean, yeah, his style, he's a boxer, he trains at Gleason's Gym, that's strictly a boxing facility, so my goal is to, uh, you know, I, I know he's not going to be stronger than me in the clinch, I don't see it happening, and uh, if I get him on the ground, you know, he doesn't have any ground game. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I think if I get him out of his element, you know, it's going to be different, and, uh, as far as boxing going, you know, I don't think he's going to have as near as, as much speed as me. I mean, I've seen the guys he's fought, you know, they're fighters, but they had no business fighting that guy. He ain't been pushed yet. Right. Now, um, I know you're probably not, you don't want to look ahead at all, but I'm a reporter, so I have to nag you with this kind of stuff, but who do you see as the biggest threat in the tournament to yourself? I mean, is it a guy like Sparks who can just hit really, really freaking hard, or is there someone else that you think maybe has the toughest overall style that you think would be the most difficult matchup for you? Oh, man, to me, I think the, the toughest competitor, you know, <laughs> I always give him crap because he's, he's, uh, he's an old man, but uh, that'd be Neil Grove, man. I mean, he's been there, he knows what it's about, he knows how to do it and adjust his training. Uh, all of us other guys, we're, we're newcomers to this. Uh, you know, like you said, the fights are pretty close, you know, within a couple of weeks, maybe three weeks at the max, away from each other, you know, and uh, <clears throat> he's uh, Granny Hill. I can't look past, you know, on as far as he, you know, there's a lot of tough guys in this tournament. But, uh, yeah, definitely Neil Grove, man. I mean, he knows he's been there. He's in it last year, made it all the way to Cole Conrad. But, I mean, that guy, being an extra rugby player, I mean, he's a tough guy. He's big, he's strong, he's fast. He's not only that, but he's an athlete. Mm-hmm. So, to me, I mean, I 
I think it'd be no road. Right. Now, of course, all of you guys are really fighting for the same thing, and that's uh, to fight the chance to fight the guy you mentioned, which is uh, Cole Conrad, and he looked really good his last fight against Paul Buentello, like his striking's really come along. We already know how good his wrestling is, so, um, you know, what do you think of the Bellator champ, and, you know, uh, how eager are you to get a matchup against him, and where do you think you would give him the most trouble? Uh, man, uh, I think to be, uh, just to be in the same case with Cole Conrad would be an honor. I mean, the guy's been there. He's, he's the champion. You know, that's what all of us are striving for. To me, it's, it's not about really the money. I got a great job, you know. But uh, to me, it's just competing at that level, saying you fought with the best of the best. And uh, with Cole Conrad, I think my me giving him trouble would be my boxing. I mean, he's, he's just a wrestler. Uh, you know, then I'd have to stay moving and be quick and just be faster. I have to rely on a lot of speed. Against that guy, because if he gets on you, I mean, it's going to be heavy and off you. Right, absolutely. All right, well, man, let me tell you, I really appreciate the time, but I wanted to give you an opportunity. If there's any, you know, sponsors, training partners, or whoever you'd like to thank, go ahead and do that. Uh, I like to thank all my, you know, American Tattoo uh, schools out there, and uh, uh, my American Tattoo school here. Uh, all my training with sparring partners out at USA Stars, and all, all them cats over there at the. Uh, uh, Academy of Martial Arts, you know, they're, they're great supporters of me, you know, uh, give me up the feedback and just stand positive, you know, mm-hmm. so I like to thank all those cats. All right, great, well, like I said, I appreciate it, and we'd love to have you on again in the future, so uh, good luck, and we'll be in touch, but thanks a lot. I appreciate it.